I found the the contrast between the experiences, but also the similarity between the experiences of all the retailers here. I think you know you had represented quite a lot of different types of retailer, um, supermarkets, uh, toy stores, the big department stores, and they all had a lot of similar experiences. And I think everyone's a bit confused about where LEDs are and what they uh, can and can't achieve and what people are claiming they can and can't achieve. I'm always pressurised by my clients to use LED because their facilities teams have heard that the, about the energy saving benefits of it and then they want to know what I think and I, and I, and I can only go by my experience really which is that, it, that you know we've had good and bad experiences of them and where you use LEDs in the right situation they're okay but it has to have all the things that we've talked about today the right control Controllers, drivers, dimmers, etc. What this conference has shown me is that LEDs are not the only light that's out there. And I think as a learning curve for me, over the last five years, I was really, really excited by LEDs. And I took them as a passion and started changing them and they started to fail. They didn't do what they were going to do. And as I said with the stain shop, the managing director hated them. But it's a learning curve of putting the right fittings in in the right place at the right time. LED ha has a role. We've just uh, completed the Wonder Room from a full reflow from cold cathode to LED. The LED, which are nine donuts, we've replaced all the LED pelman lighting and also in conjunction with the metal halides existing and the, and the existing uh, uh, halogen lamp as well. It's, it, it's, it's there. LED is there as far as we're concerned. I don't think it's necessarily the total answer. Uh, but there is a place for LED in our business and we've used it quite predominantly in, in new areas um, but with a mix, it's a mix with metal halide and, and fluorescent in some cases as well. We've got the Habitat brand which is using an LED product which has been very very well received because it creates a, a fantastically moody effect which is what the brand looks like and on, and on the Argus and Home Base estates we're trialling LEDs in an under mes application on Argo, sorry, on Homebase, which we're hoping to roll out into new stores later this year. And on Argos, we're about to embark on a new store format. Again, um, uh, we, uh, we hope to use LEDs there. Well, I think what really came through today is that it's um, really a lot of practicality involved in the retail lighting business as well. You know, I mean, what all the retailers were saying was that, OK, they know what they need to do. Uh, they're, most of them have bought into the idea of LEDs, and obviously quite a few were implementing that. But you know, they also need buy-in from the board, they need to be persuaded that they're going to get a return on their investment. Uh, you know, in particular, they need to be persuaded that the store environment is going to improve. And certainly the timelines are important too. I, I think you know, we, talked, we had the entertainer talking about five years as a, a possible uh, return on investment. You know, most of the people around the table were talking more like two and a half, three years. And you know, I think one of the things you do always have to remember is uh, the speed at which uh, stores are fitted out. And you know, a lot of practical requirements, maintenance in particular, I think came across very strongly today. What came true to, uh, for me this morning from our retailers is that they, they want to do the right thing, they want to address their energy, but they're confused about LEDs, they've, they've trialled LEDs, and um, they have a lot of boxes to tick and they have a lot of challenges to, to overcome. And I think as an industry, we need to do more to help them to achieve that. The industry, from an LED point of view, is to try and get the actual look and feel, the textures, the coordination, the actual colour that needs to stand out in certain parameters, needs to stand out more than it actually does at the moment, I can't do at the moment, compared to Metal Halide as an example. What I need is better information. I need information that I can compare properly one manufacturer's offer to another manufacturer's offer. I mean, some of the claims, they're kind of ridiculous. And people like, like me can see that. But I feel sorry sometimes when those manufacturers are going to to end users who haven't got that expert knowledge and they maybe read these wonderful stories of fittings that are going to last for huge numbers of hours and they haven't got the expert knowledge to actually dissect that. Where we need to go as a company is we need to involve lighting designers. Somebody like myself is not expert enough to be able to do a lighting design and 
get it past the directors. So a lighting design is incredibly important and I think that's what's come across, but it's all down to cost. Breaking the market down when we look at the retail space into six areas, whether it's ambient, accent, architectural, uh, exterior, uh, refrigeration and, and back of house. You know, and our fundamental belief is that if you understand the application, you can build more relevant products to our customers' needs. So that really is our philosophy. And then all of this is, is backed up by the you know, the testing protocol that we go through, which, you know, is, is pretty rigorous at GE. You know, we are ones for really challenging this industry to adopt LM79 and LM80. You know, if we can do that, then we can bring a level of quality uh, that hasn't been seen in the LED industry for, well, since you adopt.